Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is October 5th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about the harmful algae bloom that continues to affect Florida, which is now ranked as one of the top worst algae blooms to ever impact Florida in general, and an algae bloom that has transferred from the west coast of Florida to the Atlantic coast of Florida, which is a very rare event for, for such movement of a large algae bloom to occur. But before I get into that, I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit about how climate change related influences can interact with one another. One being that harmful algae blooms in the Gulf of Mexico are amplified by nor warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, providing a more favorable environment for algae blooms. And in addition to that, now that seas have risen across the US East Coast due to glacial melt, due to warming atmospheric and ocean conditions, which are pushing ocean levels higher, these red tides are now running in on king tides and flooding ocean water into streets and moving these harmful algae blooms into neighborhoods and into cities and into infrastructure. So, so a double impact, both influenced by human-caused climate change in that harmful algae blooms are amplified by warming ocean conditions and rising oceans due to glacial melt and thermal expansion of the ocean itself generates flooding and can move these harmful algae blooms into communities such as Miami, as we can see in this picture and from this headline from the Miami News New Times, which the headline which states, red tide sludge could flood Miami during king tide season city warms. And it's very important to point out that, that both of these impacts have been influenced by human caused climate change. Now, what's going on with the algae bloom at present? So the, the harmful red tide algae bloom began and, and had its greatest intensity along the, the southwest coast of Florida. But what's happening is that this bloom is starting to cycle into the Gulf Stream and is moving to around the, the tip of Florida and along the east coast. And it's worth noting that warmer than normal temperatures in the ocean in the range of nearly two degrees Celsius above average, so one to two degrees Celsius above average off the Florida West Coast to about a degree Celsius above average off the Florida East Coast are helping to enhance the algae bloom that is ongoing there. It's worth noting that just a couple days after the red tide was confirmed in Palm Beach, we're starting to observe fish kills with hundreds of dead fish now being washed up on the shore of North Palm Beach, according to this report by WSVN 7 News on October 3rd. And overall, the, the extent of, of the bacteria, the harmful bacteria called Carinia brevis, is is on the move and and you can see from this map here the notifications of low medium to high concentrations of Carinia brevis on the west coast as well as uh, low to medium to high starting to pop up on the east coast as the red tide moves with the ocean currents a more detailed map shows that even high concentrations of Carinia brevis have now been reported near Jupiter Inlet. And these low, medium to high concentrations, you shouldn't focus too much on the fact that, that Carinia brevis is in a low concentration because the harmful bacteria can still have an effect on sensitive persons even 
when concentrations are low. So people with a chronic respiratory condition can experience discomfort even when harmful algae concentrations are, are very low. And people with sensitive lungs can experience distress when concentrations are low. And then this is because the, the bacteria itself produces a, a number of biological toxins that affect the respiratory system. And moderate and high concentrations can cause distress among just regular people who, who don't have the sensitivities. So, so, so harmful algae blooms can, can cause all sorts of problems with wildlife, but are also a human health risk. And it is worth noting that numerous reports of respiratory irritation have been reported over the past week in places like Pinellas, Manatee, Sarasota, Lee, and Collier counties, and along the East Coast in Palm Beach and St. Lucie counties. So an expanding algae bloom being pushed into some communities by rising ocean waters due to human-caused climate change, and an algae bloom ex itself, which is exacerbated by warming sea surfaces in the in the Gulf of Mexico and in the Atlantic, which is also driven by human-caused climate change. It's also worth noting that a number of other con contributing fac factors have made this particular algae bloom worse. However, a background condition of human-caused climate change is that oceans tend to favor harmful algae blooms because they're warmer and because rainfall events over land intensify, thus flushing more nutrients out into the ocean and providing more food for harmful algae blooms to occur as well. And it's, it's just something that I'd like to point out that, that as the earth warms, the, the prevalence for these nasty algae blooms grows and you end up with more dead zones in the world ocean. And in worst case, global warming scenarios, the ocean itself in, in many regions is at risk of, of becoming quite toxic as, as a result of expanding algae blooms. Now, we're not in, in a worst case ocean environment situation yet, but what is happening is that these climate change impacts are enhancing the likelihood and the extremity of these events. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.